OK, let's compare answers. The first question. Friar Benaventura is telling Giovanni. Well, let's take a look at this one one fifty seven. Wait, why is. It is 63. Why did I think it's 57? Very weird. Um, OK, yes, yeah, so here uh, in this scene, Friar Bonaventura is saying. Uh, you absolutely cannot sleep with your sister. If you must uh, express your desire, leave her and take thy choice which means you can choose any other woman, which actually means you can choose more than one woman. Tis much less sin, so it's still bad, but it's less bad. Though in such games as those, they lose that win. So if you do choose to do this, even when you win, you still lose. Um, and so a couple of groups took this question, and the question is, do you agree with this idea? Why or why not? A couple of groups took this idea. Um, two groups agreed, one group disagreed. Let's start from the group that disagreed because it's only one group. Uh, so one group said, it's not necessarily true that sleeping with lots of random women will make you lose something. As long as each time, each encounter, everybody is clear about what's going on and you all agree to everything, then uh, you can have a good time and lose nothing. This, I think, is the uh, common view in Western culture today. Like we have full control over our own bodies. As long as everybody knows and agrees with what's going on, you have the right to do whatever you want that doesn't hurt someone else. And to that extent, I think that makes sense. Um, now, this group also agrees that if we look at the play, it's not just Western society, it's a Western religious society. So in that case, uh, Giovanni would lose something, mainly his soul. The other two groups disagree, uh, sorry, agree with this idea, even if we bring it to today and we don't think about the religious part. Uh, one group mentioned that uh, maybe having lots and lots of sex, even if everybody agrees, might uh, go in the opposite direction of the satisfaction of a long term relationship. There are things that you can only get by staying with one person for a long time. Um, and that might be a kind of loss. Now, uh, the other group did a more detailed analysis. Thinking about Giovanni's different choices here. If Giovanni sticks with his sister, he's going to hell. If Giovanni sleeps with many random women, he's going to hell. If Giovanni sleeps with one particular woman who's not his sister and they get married first, he's not going to hell, but he, the rest of his life will be a living hell because he still loves his sister. So uh, according to this logic, no matter what Giovanni chooses, he will be losing something. Um, and I think uh, I'm really glad to hear so many different ideas about this question. Uh, and, you know, again, there's no right answer. Uh, depends on how you look at human relationships and what you want out of your own life. OK, question two, this sentence. Do you think this makes sense? So this is on. The next page. Something, something. So uh, before this scene, Grimaldi appears. Why can't I find it? Yeah, OK, here we go. It's here. Um, so in this scene, Grimaldi appears and tries to uh, prevent 
or like kill Saranzo. He doesn't like Saranzo. He also wants to marry Annabella, but they manage to uh, get Grimaldi away, right? In the previous line, Saranzo says, I fear thee not, Grimaldi. Exit Grimaldi. So he leaves. Um, and then Florio says, My Lord Saranzo, this is strange to me. Why you should storm having my word engaged? So I'm very confused. Why are you so angry, even though I have given you my word? I have promised you that you will marry Annabella. And then the question, owing her heart, what need you doubt her ear? Now that you own her heart, now that you will be married to her, why do you have to worry about what she hears from other men? And then he says, losers may talk by law of any game. So he's saying, uh, it's a common fact that anyone who loses a game has the right to say whatever they want because they lost. It doesn't make a difference. And so the question is, do you think it is true that Saranzo does not have to worry about what other men say to Annabella? Um, the groups who took this question all disagree. They think that, yes, you have promised that Annabella will marry Saranzo, but so if other men come and try to take her away and she falls in love with these other men, she might run away and change her mind. Sorry, change her mind and run away. Even if she doesn't change her mind uh, and still marries Saranzo, maybe she will feel differently about Saranzo after listening to uh, other pursuers and thinking about other possibilities. Maybe it would make her marriage less happy. Now, what no group mentioned is that somebody will come and change Annabella's mind. That somebody is Giovanni. Uh, so here they're talking about other men who can legally marry Annabella, whereas in the play, the person who actually changes her mind is someone who cannot marry her legally. Um, yeah, so this is a good question to get us to think about uh, promises, personal agency, which means freedom to choose, uh, and what is the value of an agreement? A an agreement, according to this answer, is not very valuable if it is the only thing that you have. Right, a good solid agreement should reflect the intentions of both parties, not just something that they put on paper. This is actually also applicable to international law, Guojifa. In a regular, like in, in terms of a regular law, if somebody breaks the law, the police, the courts, or maybe you yourself can sue the person who breaks the law, breaks the contract. But in international law, if a country breaks international law, who decides what happens to them? The answer is really nobody. Depends on which laws you break, right? If if you if you do something wrong and uh, the US, UK, France, Russia, and China don't support you, then the UN can do something to you. If you agreed to join one of the international courts and you break a law and somebody another country sues you in the international court and you lose, then something will happen to you. But if you're not one of these two kinds of countries, then really nobody can punish you if you break international law. So an agreement is only as strong as the intention to follow and force people to follow that agreement. If it's just words on paper, it doesn't really mean anything. Question three, how would you describe Giovanni's wooing strategy? One group took this question. Let's take a look at this. I think this is really interesting. So traditionally, especially in this kind of play, not OK, not this kind of play, but in a romantic play, 
Uh, if a man wants to pursue a woman, there is a specific strategy that the man is expected to use. Spoiler alert, Giovanni uses this strategy. Even though he is her brother. Uh, and that's kind of what makes this scene fun because it's very traditional, but it feels very, very wrong. So let's take a look. Uh, so this is on page 428. Uh, the first thing Giovanni does, let me entreat you, leave us a while, Putana. Entreat means ask you. So Putana, please leave us alone. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, and then they go on a walk, right? Come, sister, lend your hand. Let's walk together. So they're walking, holding hands. Annabella thinks they're having a nice uh, brother-sister bonding time. But then Giovanni says, I hope you need not blush to walk with me. I hope you don't feel embarrassed to walk with me. Why would she feel embarrassed to walk with her brother? So this first line is making things weird, making things awkward. And he says, here's none but you and I. Again, this shouldn't matter, right? They're brother and sister. So Annabella says, how's this? Which means, what do you mean? Uh, so you can see that the first thing Giovanni tries to do is to try to create the space for imagination and possibility. He's suggesting that maybe there's something else happening here. Uh, and Annabella uh, doesn't know what's going on. So Giovanni continues, faith, I mean no harm. Faith means in truth, really. Really, I mean no harm. And again, Annabella is thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? Harm? Uh, and then Giovanni backs away. He says, how is it with thee? So how are you? How is it with thee? How are you? Uh, and then Giovanni doesn't really care what she says. The point is the next line. Trust me, but I am sick. I fear so sick to cost my life. I'm so sick I might die. Uh, and then later he gets her to agree. I think you love me, sister. And she, he, she says, yes, you know I do. Of course, they're talking about two different kinds of things. Um, so here he's trying to make her care about him. And then he gets her to say that she loves him. And then he says, you're very fair. Fair means beautiful. So uh, here he starts praising how beautiful she is, right? Like such a pair of stars as are thine eyes. Your eyes are like stars. Would like Promethean fire, if gently glanced, give life to senseless stones. Prometheus is the Greek God who gave humans fire. So he's saying, just like Prometheus gave us fire and let us uh, have a, a life, your eyes, if you looked at stones, would make them come alive. That's how beautiful they are, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, Annabella is confused, can't take it. She says, do you mock me or flatter me? Do you, uh, dost thee, d? Uh, do you mock me or flatter me? Are you having, are you making fun of me or are you complimenting me? Um, and so to make her realize how serious he is, he offers his dagger to her. He pulls out his knife and hands it to her. Here. And then Annabella says, what to do? What do you want me to do with this? And he says, and here's my breast, my chest. Strike home, like stick the knife in me. Rip up my bosom. Bosom also means chest. So rip open my chest. There thou shalt behold, you will see, a heart in which is writ the truth I speak. On my heart is written uh, the truth of what I am saying. And so now Annabella really can't ignore the situation anymore. This is a classic wooing strategy. She knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, she has to deal with this situation. Uh, and apparently, uh, Annabella doesn't react because Giovanni says, why standy? Why are you just standing there? 
Annabella, are you earnest? Are you serious? Yes, most earnest. You cannot love? Whom? Me. Ah, so now it's all out in the open. And now uh, Giovanni has said exactly what he means. Uh, and then uh, he explains why he's sick. My tortured soul hath felt affliction in the heat of death. Affliction means sickness. Oh, Annabella, I am quite undone, which means I'm ruined. I'm confused. Well, uh, the love of thee, my sister, and the view of thy immortal beauty hath untuned all harmony both of my rest and life. So my love for you and the sight of how beautiful you are have destroyed all harmony in my life, had made me unable to rest. Uh, and again, it looks like Annabella is just standing there. So he says, why do you not strike? Why don't you stick that knife in me? Well, of course, she's not actually going to kill him, right? It's a symbol. It's a symbolic uh, question. Why don't you answer? Why don't you react, basically? Uh, and Annabella says, forbid it, my just fears. So, like, obviously, I'm not going to stick this knife in you. Uh, and so uh, she says, if this be true to fit her, I were dead. If you really do love me like this, I would rather be dead than be in this situation. Uh, and here it's Giovanni's turn to ignore her. He says, true, Annabella. So I mean it. I'm, I'm serious. Tis no time to jest. This is not a time to uh, make fun, to joke around. So he's saying himself, right? I wouldn't joke about this. But he's also saying to Annabella, don't joke about wanting to die. It's kind of like ignoring her feelings at this moment. Uh, and then he says some more about how much he loves her. Uh, Annabella says, you are my brother Giovanni. And this is the main issue, right? We're brother and sister. Uh, Giovanni, you, my sister Annabella, I know this. And could afford you instance why to love so much the more for this. So yes, I know we're brother and sister and I could explain to you, I can give you examples, I can give you arguments why our love would be stronger because we are brother and sister. So here he's talking about all of the arguments he gave to the friar in Act 1, Scene 1. Remember, the friar said you're talking nonsense, uh, but here he says, I have asked counsel of the Holy Church who tells me I may love you. I talked to the priest and he says it's fine. Lies. Uh, and then he says, and tis just, and therefore it is right that since I may, I should and will. Yes, will. So with this line, he's shutting down all objections from Annabella. There, according to Giovanni, there is no reason for you to reject me unless you don't love me. That's the only possible reason. And so he poses this question to her. Must I? Love is like a battlefield. But notice what she says. Thou hast won the field and never fought. So you didn't have to. Uh, what thou hast urged, my captive heart had long ago resolved. What you want me to do, I myself, my own heart long ago had decided the same. So she's saying, actually, I also secretly kind of love you too. Uh, captive heart. Captive means uh, captured, so not free. The idea is that her heart is captured by love. 
she has no choice but to love him. Uh, so here, for every sigh, Tanchi, that thou hast spent for me, I have sighed ten. For every tear shed, twenty. So she's saying, uh, actually, I love you too. So going back to the question, how would you describe Giovanni's wooing strategy? Well, the group that I talked with said it's uh, fraud, emotional blackmail, bullying, which is true, but it's also a very traditional romantic uh, wooing strategy. And so uh, the audience watching this scene would recognize that this is the traditional strategy, but they would also know that it should not be happening between brother and sister. That's what makes this scene so fun. Um, but also this uh, reminds us that if you watch like older romantic comedies, a lot of romantic comedies are actually kind of strange in the same way. Like the man is doing crazy shit and the woman thinks it's romantic. Uh, like I, there's there's one movie where like uh, the woman gets into an accident and wakes up and can't remember who the man is. So the man says, I'm your husband. And that's supposed to be romantic. I don't know. Uh, Rom-coms can be kind of weird. So, you know, that also has a long tradition. Question four, nobody took this question. So let's look at this together. OK, so this is page 432. Yes, OK. Soranzo in his study reading a book. He's reading some poetry. What does he read? Uh, notice the quotation mark here, right? So he's reading from the book. Love's measure is extreme. So the word measure is a noun. It means standard. The standard of love is extreme. The comfort is pain. The life of love is unrest and the reward is disdain. Uh, so this is also a very traditional way to think about love. Love has to be extreme. It has to be painful. It has to cause you unrest. You're never able to rest your mind. You're always thinking about the person you love. And the reward for love is disdain. So like you chase and you chase, but the other person just doesn't love you back. Uh, disdain means contempt. Um, and Saranzo disagrees, but Sanazar, thou liest. Uh, to work then, happy muse. So he muse is, of course, imagination, the source of poetry. To work then, happy muse, and contradict what Sanazar hath in his envy writ. So let's argue against what Sanazar has written. And so Saranzo writes, love's measure is the mean. Mean is average. Uh, even today, the, the word mean means average in statistics. So love's measure is the mean, sweet his annoys. If you get annoyed by love, it's all the more sweet. His pleasure's life. The life of love is pleasure. And his reward, all joys. The reward of love is all joy. So that's the comparison between the two uh, poets, I guess. The first one says love is pain and uh, unrest. The other one says love is sweet and pleasurable and, and happy. The question is, which one do you think is better? And why? Well, as I said, uh, so not, what's his name? Sanazar's poetry is very traditional. If you remember from uh, introduction to British literature, we started by reading some sonnets. 
And in some of those sonnets, the man was like, I love her so much, but she doesn't love me back, but it's OK. I can suffer by myself. Um, so it's very traditional. But Sanazar says that. Uh, sorry, Soranzo says that Sanazar thinks this because of his envy. The idea is you only think like this because you have never actually won a relationship with a woman. Uh, and so Soranzo says, in truth, real love is is in the middle, average, but happy and sweet. Um, but, you know, if you think about it, it could be true. But the first comparison, I think, shows which one is better. Love's measure is the mean. The standard of love is average. I don't know. That doesn't sound very romantic to me. How's your relationship? Oh, it's an average relationship. Eh. Um, so in terms of poetry, I personally think Saranzo's poetry is more romantic and emotional. Um, but as a model of what kind of relationship you want, it might not be the best kind of relationship. Actually, Taylor Swift wrote a song about this. Uh, on her 2009 album, sorry, 2008 album Fearless, she has a song called The Way I Loved You. And the song is about like how, oh, my current boyfriend is nice. Uh, he's he's kind. He's chivalrous. He gets along with my dad. He's the perfect guy. But I miss having 3 a.m. arguments with my ex-boyfriend and like getting angry at him all the time. And so ex exactly these two kinds of relationships, right? The second one, love is average, sweet, happy, is like her current boyfriend. And the first one, love is torture and suffering and extremes, is her ex-boyfriend. Um, yeah, so the, the first kind is more emotional, has more power, is more so-called romantic. But the second kind of relationship is healthier, longer lasting, uh, in the long run, probably a better relationship. But the question is about poetry, not about relationships. So the first kind of poetry is probably better. And question five, two groups took this question. Some lines are in prose, other lines are in poetry. Why is there this difference? In other words, how do you decide which lines should be in prose and which lines should be in poetry? So um, this edition does not really mark the prose passages very clearly, but you can kind of tell, like when you see all of this empty space on the right, the, this is probably prose. You can also count the feet, right? Uh, for example, kiss me, so thus hung Jove on Lee does neck, five and suck divine ambrosia from her lips. So this is verse, this is poetry. But like here, did she harp upon that string that it doesn't fit? Did she harp upon that string I that she did I answer live me? It doesn't sound natural. Um, and like in the middle lines, there's also too many feet. Woman, he hath no other wit if he had he should so like there's three extra so this is prose um so what makes the difference so the group that took this or sorry the two groups that took this question uh they thought maybe it had to do with like uh the emotion or like the situation um but if you look closely at which parts are poetry and which parts are prose you'll notice that the pattern actually has to do with identity. Most of this is, I, no, all of this is poetry. Giovanni and Annabella talk in verse. Florio also talks in verse. When Donato talks with Florio, he also talks in verse. But then Forgetto and Poggio enter and they use prose. Forgetto. Oh, uncle, I have heard the strangest news that ever came out of the mint. Have I not, Poggio? It's prose, it's not verse. 
Uh, and then later when Donato answers him, he says, Wilt thou be a fool still? Come, sir, you shall not go. You have more mind of a puppet play than on the business I told ye. Again, prose. Uh, and then we have a later example of uh, Put Putana also speaks in prose, if I can find her. Here, okay. Uh, Annabella still speaking in verse. Oh, guardian, what a paradise of joy have I passed over. But then Putana, right, this, her line does not continue from the end of the previous line. It's not part of the same line of poetry. It's a new line, and she speaks in prose. Nay, what a paradise of joy have you passed under? Why, now I commend thee, charge. Fear nothing, sweetheart, what though he be your brother. It's prose. So we see that it looks like the more important characters speak in poetry, and the less important characters speak in prose. And for someone in the middle, like Donato, Donato is a citizen like Florio, but his uh, relationship to the other characters is he is the uncle of Bergetto. Bergetto is an idiot. And so whenever Donato is talking with Bergetto, he speaks in prose. But when he's talking to other important people, he speaks in verse. So then this brings up the next question. Why? Why do the more important characters speak in poetry? Well, uh, I should flip that around. Why do the less important characters speak in prose? Last week we mentioned that uh, most of the play is in poetry to help the actors remember their lines. So there should be a special reason why some characters don't use poetry. Uh, and the reason could be that there is a cultural connection with using poetry to speak. It's the same cultural logic behind why uh, people think that an essay full of cultural allusions, yong dian, is a better essay. Not always, but people sometimes think this. The idea is, in order to be able to talk in poetry, you must have read and learned a lot of poetry. And only people with time and money and resources can have the chance to read and learn so much poetry. So by taking verse away from the lower status characters, it's telling us that they, they are like working class, they are uh, lower status, they don't have the time and money to study and learn poetry. Of course, for the audience, there's not much difference. Um, when we read it on the page, we can see the poetry, each one. This is not poetry, sorry. Here, we can see each line has five feet. Uh, sorry, uh, 10 beats, five feet. It, the meter is very regular. But for someone in the audience, they can't tell the difference most of the time. I've been reading it like poetry to help guide you, but in fact, the real actor would say something like this. You shall bind me to you. Daughter, I must have conference with you about some matters that concerns us both. Good master doctor, please you but walk in. We'll crave a little of your cousin's cunning. I think my girl hath not quite forgot to touch an instrument. She could have done it. We'll hear them both. It also sounds very similar to the prose. There's only one line in this that sounds more like poetry. This line, because it ends in a comma. Uh, the performance version is, good master doctor, please you but walk in. Whereas if you want to read it like poetry, it's good master doctor, please you but walk in. Very similar, but the other lines, um, there's no real difference. So this is for the benefit of the actors and for the readers and for the people in the audience who can hear the difference. Um, 
if you remember this idea and later you decide to take my Shakespeare course, you will notice that sometimes Shakespeare will let a commoner, an, a socially unimportant person, also speak in verse. And if you remember this, then you will know that this is because Shakespeare is telling us this person actually could be important. He may not be a nobleman, he may not have a high social standing, but he could be important for the play or the thing that he's saying could be important. OK, do you have questions about uh, today's discussion? OK, before next week, please read up to. Uh, Act three, scene nine. Where's that? Here, so please read up to. Why did I say scene nine? Just finish, finish act three. All right, so up to the end of act three, scene nine is actually before the beginning of act four. Uh, this is page 445. So that's another like 10 or 11 pages. Now again, if you think you're not going to finish, you can take a look at my discussion questions and focus on the related parts. Uh, and we can put things together in class. Um, in this part of the play, we start to get more ideas about what the other characters are doing. Like who is pl plotting against who, who is enemies with who. There's a fight uh, involving Grimaldi. Somebody dies. Things get exciting. OK, see you next week.